Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about uh, exponential growth functions and we're going to do some problems, uh, some basic problems to get you going on exponential growth functions and how to operate with those functions and equations. All right, so first set of problems. We're going to tell whether the function represents exponential growth or exponential decay or neither. So remember from the lesson, the difference between growth and decay, right, we had the same model, y is equal to ab to the x. Uh, for both growth and for decay, remember, a is going to be greater than 0. Remember what the difference is for growth, right, the b value is going to be greater than 1, and for decay, remember the b value is going to be between 0 and 1. All right, let's also just step back a second. What happens when b is equal to 1? Right, what happens when b is equal to 1? If I have 1 half to the 1, um, excuse me, when I have b is equal to 1, not x is equal to 1, when b is equal to 1, and I take that value to the x power, as x gets larger and larger, b stays, and the y value becomes 1, right? It stays at 1. When uh, the value of x gets smaller and smaller, y continues, the output continues to be 1. So there's no change in the output. When I have 1 to anything, that value is always going to be, the output value is always going to be 1. So that's why we say greater than 1 or between 0 and 1, but not equal to 1. Because if b were equal to 1, then the result for y would just be 1 in this case. Now, if I had some uh, value for a in front of the uh, expression 1 to the x, then I would just multiply that value 3 times 1. So now my graph would shift up, right, and my result would be y is equal to 3. Right, so the growth, the difference between growth and decay, the b value for uh, the growth model is greater than 1. For decay, it's going to be between 0 and 1. So let's take a look at some of the problems that we have. And let's ask ourselves, in number 1, is this a growth or decay function? Well, there is no value for a, or a is 1, right? So there's no, uh, there's no uh, effect that a provides to this particular function in this case. My value of b is 3, 4, so it's between 0 and 1. So this function is going to be dk. It's going to be a dk function. And the next function, I have 5 thirds. The value of b is going to be greater than 1, and the value of b is greater than 1. So my uh, function is going to be a growth function. And then finally, I have uh, uh, f of x is equal to, or y is equal to 5 to the x. b in this case is greater than 1, so this is a growth function as well. Okay, so let me give you a couple more problems. Uh, what happens if I say y is equal to 1 half times 3 to the x? Is that exponential growth or is that exponential decay? So remember, we're looking at the b value. The b value is greater than 1, so this is going to be growth. And then what happens if I write a function y is equal to 3 times 1 half to the x? Right. Again, I look at the b value. This is the a value. Now the a value has to be greater than 0. In this case it is, in, either, in order for it to be either growth or decay. Uh, but this value of a does not affect whether it's a growth or decay function as long as it's greater than 0. And I see that this value here is between 0 and 1, so my b value is between 0 and 1. So this represents a dk function. All right, last problem for you. What happens if I say y is equal to 4 times 1 fourth to the negative x? Is that growth or dk? All right, or neither. So if you think about it, remember the negative exponent just applies to this value in parentheses. And really what it's, I can rewrite this equation as y is equal to 4, right, the negative exponent applies, I take the reciprocal of the value in parentheses, 4 to the x. So this in reality is a growth function. My b value is greater uh, than 1. Okay, let's go on to a couple more problems. We're going to match the graph of the function. In this case, what we have to do is just substitute in values for x to figure out what the results are for y, and then identify where those uh, points are in the given graphs to see which curve uh, we're matching. All right, so in this case, let's take the point 0. So 1 half to the 0 is going to be equal to 1. So I have 0, 1 as one of the points. All right, I can say 1 half to the 1 
and that's going to be <clears throat> one half. So my other point is one one half. So this is a decay function. I see I have a decay function here, a decay function here, decay function here. All right, so I'm looking at these uh, three decay functions, and I see the points is 0, 1, and 1, 1 half in the B graph. So this graph um, is represented by this function or this model. All right, let's take B, or number 8, excuse me. So I'll erase this. And I, again, I substitute in values for x, and I get a result for the function. So if I take 0 for x, I have a negative 1, right? I have 1 half to the 0 is 1, and I apply the negative sign. So now I have negative 1. So 0, negative 1. Then I take, uh, let's see, I'll take uh, the value of 1, because it looks like the second input is going to be 1. So 1 half to the 1 is going to be 1 half. Negative 1 half is my result. So I have 1, and negative 1 half is my result. So let's see if I can find a uh, graph that represents these two points. And it looks like my graph is going to be f. I have 0, negative 1 as one coordinate, and 1, negative 1 half as my other. So this second question, number 8, is going to be an answer f. All right, let's take number 9. Again, we uh, substitute in the value of 0 for x. So I get 1 half to the 0 is 1. And then 3 times 1, so remember order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, uh, not multiplication, and then uh, exponents. So I take the parentheses, 1 half, take that to the 0, that gives me 1. 3 times 1 is 3, so my result is uh, 0 for x, 3 for y. That's one point. And then I, again, I test point uh, value x of 1. 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. 3 times 1 half is 3 halves, so I have uh, 1 and three halves as my other point. So I'm going to look in the, um, and this is an exponential decay function, right? A is greater than zero, B is between zero and one. Zero, three, one, three halves. I see that E is going to be the answer for number nine. Okay, last question for you. Uh, we buy a new video game for 60 bucks. The value of the game decreases by 25% each year. We're in an exponential decay model, giving the computer's value V in dollars after T years. What is the value of the game after three years? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the model. So the value, ending value, is equal to the beginning value, which we'll say is a, times one minus, remember, so dk functions minus, growth functions plus, the percent decrease as a decimal, decreases 25% a year, and then we're going to figure that over three years. All right, so that value here is, the ending value, a is going to be $60, 1 minus 0.25 to the third, and I'll let you do the calculations for a second, and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm back, and we're going to take care of the parentheses first. 1 minus 0.25 gives us 0.75. Exponent second, 0.75 to the third power gives us approximately 0.422. Multiplication third, I multiply 60 times 0.422, and that gives me my ending value of $25.30. So you go to sell three years later, you sell, and I think that's a pretty generous estimate as far as what I can tell. 25 bucks for a three-year-old video game. I'm guessing it's more like uh, five bucks. But I'm just running with these numbers for fun. So 25.31 is about what you'd get. You've lost $35 over those three years. So like the car, example, you're not, uh, this is not an appreciating asset. All right, that's it for Rotten Math. Practice problems for uh, graphing exponential decay and operating with exponential decay functions. Have a great day, and we're going to talk about natural logs in the next edition of Rotten Math.